Welcome back to another Cool Tool Show and Tell. Today, my special guest is Matt Stoltz. Matt is the head of community for Prusa Research. He is the former digital fabrication editor for Make Magazine, and he has been active in the hackerspace scene for the past 11 years. He's my personal 3D printing guru, Matt Stoltz. What did you bring to show us today? I have a DeWalt 611 router. Uh, there's a lot of routers on the market, uh, a lot of great routers on the market. Uh, but I chose the 611 because I love the compact size it, that it is for, for a palm router, as well as how ubiquitous this is in the DIY CNC world. Um, if you pick up one of these and toss it into your, your toolbox and have it for, uh, I've got a flush trim bit, bit in here or uh, an edge trim, it's great for that, that project. But you can also pretty easily quick disconnect the, the collar from it and slide it into a CNC machine and use it as a CNC router because it has variable speed, um, uh, is often used in many uh, commercial CNCs that are out there like the S X-Carve or Shapeoko. Uh, and there are third party collets that you can add to it to uh, make even more precision routing on it that is great in the CNC world. Uh, so at one point, I walked through Maker Faire and looked at all the CNCs that were, were sitting on the tables at Maker Faire, and you could just count off DeWalt 611, DeWalt 611, DeWalt 611. This is really a great router in the CNC world and a great hand router for finishing your projects also. So instead of having to have two tools, you can have it mounted in your router, pull it out, and use it to finish your project when, once you're done in the, with the CNC routing on it. God, that's so interesting how there can be uh, tools like that that just everyone decides is the one that's going to fit and be like the, the Kleenex of routers for that particular industry. Uh, yeah. Now, is there anything, I mean, aside from, you know, DeWalt brand name quality, is there any feature on it that would lend itself to the CNC router community embracing it so much? It's not like a... Uh, serial speed control or anything like that. It's it's a pretty straight ahead palm router. Um, is there anything that you can you can talk to that would would explain why this is the one that everyone seems to point to? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you you nailed it for the most part of the you know the name brand quality and everything else. But it does have computerized soft start on it. So as you actually start it up, it doesn't instantly try to jump to to uh, the, the full speed. It starts up slowly and winds up to speed, which is really great so it's not trying to accidentally uh, like shake your machine or, or move your machine before you're quite ready. Um, it also has, has built into that uh, motion controllers or speed controllers that as it's trying to push through a, a more dense wood, it's actually increasing the speed so it doesn't bog itself down or not necessarily increasing the speed, but increasing the force so it doesn't slow down and bog itself down as it's going through, through more dense materials. That's great. All right. I, someday, I, some, someday in some version of a house I have in the future, uh, a CNC router would be a great addition. So I, I'm, I'm always curious to see what they're, what they're picking and what they're using. Um, now, you've got the flush well, trim router on here. Do you, is that something that you commonly come to? Have you kind of played around with different uh, router bits and have anything to recommend in that realm? Yeah, I've used lots of different router bits and lots of different bits are, are good for different purposes. Uh, one of the big reasons why I have the flush trim bit in here right now is what I like to do is um, leave tabs on my parts as I'm cutting things out on, on my CNC so that they don't come loose and, and uh, fly all over the place or get damaged by, by catching in the router. And being able to fl use the flush trim bit to just... Uh, cut off those tabs and leave kind of no trace behind on the tab is a really fast operation. And the, the clear plate on the bottom of the 611 makes it really easy to just kind of follow along. Uh, your flush trim bit has a, a bearing on the top. So you just kind of push it into the edge and guide along the edge and move it around. And I can cut off those tabs or cut off any kind of, you know, stray areas that the router may not have, have, have cut initially quite right. And, uh, you know, get a nice, nice, smooth finish. Yeah, I finally came around to flush trim routers as a way to to copy pieces. Like if I am a cop, am I cutting one single side of something out in plywood? 
to be able to use a flush trim router, clamp those pieces down and, and get that same profile uh, has been really handy in my small workshop. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and you, you'll see you'll see people even take uh, like larger project items and break them down into pieces. You know, if they don't have say a, a full four by eight CNC router, you can use something like a, an X Carver or a Shapeoko and cut say the the legs of a table and cut those into to multiple sections on out of a sheet of MDF or a sheet of plywood and kind of glue those back together and then use that as a template to create the the larger items. Um, that are, you know, out of the, the full board that you're going to actually use. Mm. Uh, and it's a great way to kind of get CNC level precision and, and you know, cutting out the, the shapes and the angles and everything else correctly without necessarily having a, a full size CNC. Yeah. All right, Matt, another great recommendation. Thanks, uh, thanks again for coming on the show. And you can find more information about this particular tool and find links to see what Matt's up to using the links down in the description. Matt, thanks again. Thanks, Donald. It's always great to be here.